Hello everyone, Ed Talks Film here. I'm Ed. We're here to talk about film and today I'm going to be reviewing probably my most anticipated movie of the entire year and that is Babylon. Babylon uh, is Damien Chazelle's newest film and basically it's kind of this big sprawling three-hour period piece about the transition from the silent era to the talkies and how that transition happened and it follows a plethora of characters uh, and in their rises and falls within the industry of Hollywood at this time that Hollywood is going through probably the biggest change it's ever been through ever maybe I would say possibly you know Hollywood in the 20s and in the 30s and to a certain extent in the 50s and we kind of get to experience, you know, what it was like, you know, what, what, what kind of stuff was going on at the time. And, you know, it's, it's in a way like, like a, like a, like kind of like the, uh, in the way that singing in the rain was kind of like that generation's like kind of history of Hollywood movie. This is like our generation's history of Hollywood movie. Now, this is a film, like I said, I'm very, very excited for this movie for a long time, ever since it was announced in 2019. I'm a big fan of Damien Chazelle, love Whiplash, love La La Land, loved First Man. All three of those films really, really, really stuck with me in unique, interesting ways. I think he's a brilliant filmmaker. And Babylon is no exception to the kind of things that Damien Chazelle does that I personally very much enjoy. Uh, this film is very big. This film is very bold. Uh, it's very um, raunchy in a way that's kind of fascinating, especially since uh, this isn't necessarily what a lot of people's conventional idea of what Hollywood in the 20s might have actually been. <laughs> I think a lot of people aren't necessarily aware of how crazy it really was. Um, and this film does play it up quite a bit I mean it is like satirizing it in a way so it's not like this is like you know the most die-hard accurate version of like 1920s and 30s Hollywood but it is true to the spirit I would say of um kind of the era and 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 you know how these people were <laughs> what they were doing what they were into and yeah it's kind of wild um I know a lot of reviews. This film is very controversial. It's seemingly Damien Chazelle's most controversial movie, which I find very fascinating because, you know, Damien Chazelle is kind of like the wonderkind of Hollywood now in the way that maybe somebody like Paul Thomas Anderson was, um, you know, in the 90s when Boogie Nights and Magnolia had been released back to back. You know what I'm saying? So Damien Chazelle kind of fills that role now. Um, cause he's a very young director and now, and he's making these big sprawling films and this one is his most ambitious to date. It's three hours and eight minutes, three hours and nine minutes, something like that. And you know, it's a big period piece and it's got a lot of big stars in it. Brad Pitt, Margot Robbie, right? Very, very big stars. And then, um, also like very interesting kind of smaller stars in there as well. We have Diego Calvo, we have Giovanna Depo, we have Lee Jun Lee, right? All these people playing these various roles within this kind of old Hollywood film. And I have to say something. It's interesting viewing the online discourse surrounding this movie because it is just so, why are people so mad? I really don't understand. I don't understand how a movie has made people this mad. Like this is like, like, remember when the Snyder Cut came out and everybody was upset? Like, there were so many just upset people that the Snyder Cut happened. Like, and then Babylon happens, everybody's dunking on it because it's, like, not making money, which I would say, I don't know what they were thinking releasing this, like, with Avatar, the Whitney Houston movie, and Black Panther all releasing in the same month. Like, what the heck is that? I think that was kind of dumb. I, I wonder if it was done on purpose, honestly, because it, it seems like legitimately the stupidest move I've ever seen um, for a release date. Like, that's a no-brainer. Don't release the movie then. I don't understand. But anyway, 
I find a discourse surrounding this movie very interesting because I actually don't understand why people are so mad. Like I get not liking a movie, but this is like insane. However, the movie itself. Let's start with the acting. Margot Robbie and um, Diego Calva are kind of like leading this movie, right? And both of them do very well. Margot Robbie plays this um, girl from Jersey who kind of is breaking into Hollywood and becomes a big actress. Um, very quick, very fast, kind of skyrocketing to fame, but has very, very uh, debilitating problems that she doesn't necessarily <laughs> um, know how to deal with. And ultimately, those things kind of, you know, hamper her character's ability to kind of reach maybe some of the heights that she should be and, and, and kind of maintain the stardom. And she's very good. I'm a, a fan of Margot Robbie. I think she's a great actress. I love her as Harley Quinn. I loved her in I, Tanya. Um, I liked her in The Wolf of Wall Street. I think she's a very, very good actress. I think in this movie, she gives a really kind of interestingly uh, emotional role because, you know, I in the way that Blonde had come out this year and Blonde was kind of like taking a look at like kind of how the industry kind of chews people up, spits them out and 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 kind of like the damaged people that sort of like find their way into this who the damaged people who maybe because of their damage have become just crazy enough to kind of like be able to make it she kind of plays on that a little bit and you know i think i think she's very good but i don't know if i necessarily feel like this is like the greatest performance ever for margot robbie i don't know since like i tanya I think it's very good. This this role is very, is kind of big in a in a similar way, in a similar way to how it was big in The Wolf of Wall Street as well. She's crazy. She's zany. She's she's like moving up a hundred miles a minute. But then there's also these very low low parts of her. Um, I think maybe I'm just not like an acting nerd. So maybe her performance is maybe more amazing than I'm giving it credit for. But for me, I, I don't know if necessarily I feel like this is like the greatest thing Margot Robbie's ever done. But she's very very good in the film and she does her character justice and it's kind of an interesting take on you know I don't if any of you guys have ever seen Singing in the Rain um she has a very interest her her character is kind of like a very interesting unsanitized take on a very specific character from Singing in the Rain then we have Diego Calva again very good actor this is the first big movie I think I've ever really seen him in I I, I don't think I've ever seen a movie with him in in general so this was kind of a fresh blank start for me he's very good in this movie as well i like kind of seeing him be kind of this like dreamer ambitious type person in this movie who kind of skyrockets from doing like these kind of lowly jobs for studio execs and degenerates and then skyrockets to to being sort of like a, a an executive in a film in the film industry and kind of seeing him have to balance Right, this world that he lives in, the stress that he's under, taking care of the problems that he has to solve. I mean, it's kind of I almost he's almost like Eddie Mannix, um, from um, you know, real life Eddie Mannix, but Eddie Mannix in uh, Hail Caesar, but without um, kind of like the seasoned experience um, that Eddie Mannix kind of exudes in that film, where he's kind of on top of everything. This film feels like. With Diego Calva's character, like he's just barely making it every time. He's barely making um, all these decisions. He's barely solving all these problems, but he's solving them and it's super stressful, right? Uh, very good. I don't know. This is probably going to be like a star, quote unquote, making performance for him. Um, but I'm interested to see what he does. I think, I think he's probably capable of a lot more than what he's capable of in this movie. Um, and I think there's a reason I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, I'll talk about one more actor first before I get to the reason why I kind of feel like that about specifically those two actors. Giovanna Depo, very good performance by him. He goes, he's he's kind of quiet. And, and it's interesting because, you know, he plays this kind of Negro jazz musician uh, in that era. And he um, kind of, again, another person, skyrockets into like being very uh, visual, vi um, you know, in front of everybody, uh, as a musician and it, and it gets really, really like, it gets big, big, so to speak. And I find it fascinating that 
you know, with his specific character, right, they're able to deal with a lot of these, like, race issues of the times in a delicate way that I thought was actually very skillful. And he's able to pull off kind of like these complicated emotions um, that his character would be feeling ultimately about, you know, make, becoming a star in this industry and then, you know, and, and leaving his leaving his roots to become a star in this big industry that's larger than life and everything. And I, I can't believe this I got to be the dream. And then once he's, you know, there, he realizes just kind of how, kind of how terrible the people around him are, you know, how, the, the, the things that he has to do in some cases in order to like make things work um, are very, very uncomfortable. I mean, there's a scene in the movie, uh, the very, very powerful scene with him where he has to put on some makeup that isn't necessarily um, got, a good, got a good reputation. Uh, in order to ensure that the lighting in the movie works for him and that he can match the other people around him. And when you're watching the film, it really just feels so... He, he He's able to convey this just weight to what he has to do, to what is going on. And I, I, I found his performance very, very compelling. I really, really liked his um, kind of whole story. I think... You know, I don't necessarily feel like he overstayed his welcome in the movie either, which I think is very good because he is a very tertiary character in the film. And that's kind of goes the same with Lee Jun Lee. She's also very good. She has uh, a kind of interesting little arc. It's not necessarily like the biggest, most boldest thing ever, but she's like this Chinese girl um, who kind of has like this, you know, uh, kind of oriental appeal to her to you know within the industry and that's kind of like the space that she fills and eventually she kind of gets herself in trouble uh because of her relationship with another character again good performance um everybody in the movie does good but i think a lot of them are very much overshadowed and this may just be me by brad pitt in babylon i think brad pitt's performance in this movie just completely blows everyone out of the water. And I think that just may be because Brad Pitt, you know, now he's doing these roles where he's kind of playing, he's 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 doing the, uh, I'm the guy who used to be the guy type thing. In this movie, he plays a, you know, a veteran actor who made his name during the silent era and has had a lot of trouble transitioning in the talkies. And he has a very painful journey throughout this film kind of coming to grips with the fact that like he's old news he's not necessarily uh at the top of his game anymore and brad pitt's able to really like bring across this pain this this kind of like behind the eyes suffering um and it kind of keeps it together but you really just feel bad for him and, and you know in the beginning of the movie he's kind of like it feels like you know he's he's having the time of his life or whatever He's, you know, he's with all these women. He had like 1,700 divorces in the movie. And you're like, oh my God, this guy's just crazy or whatever. But then there comes a time where the, 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 the light flip, the light switch flips. And you're kind of like, dang, <laughs> what are you going to do now? And he's like, what am I going to do? And he's trying his hardest. And he just can't come to grips with some of the things about his character. that I, Very, very tragic, very, very sad. And... You know, he really blows me away. His final scene in the movie is um, jaw-droppingly good. And his acting is jaw-droppingly good. And he left me shook, honestly. He was he was phenomenal. Now, when it comes to the screenplay of this movie and the directing of this movie, I think uh, this really is something to behold. It's, like I said, it's the most ambitious Damien Chazelle film uh, ever. Ever, ever, ever. It's, it's, I mean, the opening sequence is, it is a party scene that lasts probably about 20 minutes. It's insane. He's telling a lot of these stories. It's almost like Magnolia, Boogie Nights in the sense of that. There's a lot of these stories. I think a very obvious comparison a lot of people are making is that it is very much like um, Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights, but for 1920s Hollywood. And I think that's a very apt comparison. Um, it really does kind of feel like, oh, this is the changing of the decades, changing of the eras, changing of the medium. And you're following a bunch of people's rises and falls within that. And 
I think he does a very, very good job at kind of bringing across a lot of these things about Hollywood that a lot of people aren't necessarily sure about. And, you know, that's something I, I very much appreciate because I've done quite a bit of research on this era and I, and I very much enjoy kind of looking into old Hollywood history. And this movie really like nails it in a lot of ways, um, especially in some of its kind of like inside baseball jokes about um, certain people within the industry what they went through and kind of like fictionalized or unnamed versions of them and that's very cool and he you know and he directs this movie with such interesting kind of like big bombastic ease at times and at the other and uh, uh, other times he'll do something that's just so quietly devastating quietly tragic or quietly funny while at the same time doing these big humongously crazy funny things or crazy tragic things or you know very in your face at the same time it shows that Damien Chazelle kind of hasn't like lost I feel like that kind of like little tinge of like yeah but I can be like when I need to be subtle I can kind of do it in a way that like maybe you don't even catch it the first time um and I think specifically like with Brad Pitt's character um that's where I feel like that part of him really shines because you know when his character kind of goes on his kind of downswing in the film there is this like really quiet moment, <laughs> not, not not quiet in the traditional sense that like there's no sound, but like, you know, this kind of these scenes that he has like at this party, so to speak, or this scene he has specifically with this um, movie critic or journalist, so to speak. And it's just a conversation. And what he's able to communicate between those actors with the editing and with the direction, I think is absolutely phenomenal. And if it's, in a, you know, if you're into the big Wolf of Wall Street type big things, there's something, there's a lot of that in this movie. A lot, a lot of that in this movie. And, um, you know, that's obviously turned a lot of people off, uh, clearly, to the film. I think that's, I don't know what to think about that. Obviously, a lot of similar things are being said about the Wolf of Wall Street when the Wolf of Wall Street came out. I don't necessarily feel like, I feel like this is one of those things that, like, over time, you know, the divisiveness may kind of wane. I think this is a brilliant film. Um, that doesn't mean it's perfect though. I think it's, I think there's, there is a point towards the end of the movie. And by the end of the movie, I mean like the very end of the movie, like within the last 10 minutes of the movie probably, where I kind of was like, all right, how much longer is, is there gonna be though? <laughs> and, but like right as I said that, the movie ended in a couple minutes. So like it, it for me, it kind of flew by, and in the end, kind of, I felt like, all right, the end is kind of like we're kind of doing a lot here at the end. But ultimately, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that really like hampered the movie experience for me. I don't think this movie had a had a, had a film wide pacing issue. Um, I actually very, very enjoyed how I very much enjoyed how much this film was paced, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with you know a lot of the comedy, a lot of the zaniness. I mean, you're watching people make big, kind of epic films throughout it and I love the process of seeing that you know there's a lot of scenes of like you know them first experimenting with sound the f scene where they were first experimenting with sound in the film is is dr hilarious it's hilarious it's one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen in a movie ever and you know the movie's able to provide a lot of those kind of bigger moments kind of those zanier moments kind of those more crowd-pleasing moments throughout these kind of like down swoop moments that happen throughout the film where you're kind of like, oh man, introspection, depression, <laughs> all that, all that kind of jazz. So, you know, it really does keep your attention. I think this is kind of a movie that kind of needs to be made at least once, I would say, because this really is like kind of wow. I, I am still kind of a little bit blown away just by the experience itself. And Damien Chazelle's kind of like scathing Hollywood, like just the way he rips Hollywood is interesting in this film because at the same time, he doesn't, he doesn't leave it. A lot of people, you know, people are like, oh, this movie's cynical. This movie's this, this movie's that, you know, he rips Hollywood pretty hard in the film. And that's, there's no question about that. But at the same time, he's able to provide such stunning, such beautiful, such, um, uh, I don't even know what word you would say. Just, just you can tell just how much he loves the art form of cinema, though. In that, in all, within all of that, 
you can just tell like, God, this movie, this guy loves movies. He loves this art form. Even if he has a lot of negative things to say about the leadership and the industry and the culture that kind of brought these great works of art to light, he's still like, these great works of art are great works of art. And, you know, there's, some of you may have already heard about kind of like this, the ending of the film. I won't, I won't spoil it, but I know that that's going to be kind of divisive for a lot of people. I don't know how, how well that'll hit for a lot of people. For me, I feel like it worked very, very well. Babylon, this movie is messy. This movie is crazy. This movie is very long. This movie may kill Damien Chazelle's career for the foreseeable future. Um, but it's an awesome movie. I had a great time watching it. I will probably see it again. I'm very, very excited just to see, you know, where Damien Chazelle goes next. But I'm excited to see what the legacy of this film comes out to be because you know we won't know until until like five years from now how people really feel about this movie a lot of people are like you know the keyboard warriors are out there right now ripping the movie or saying it's a 10 out of 10 or whatever and i think you know eventually just like the transition from the silent era to the talkies history is going to uh decide the fate of babylon and it's kind of sad that's not making a lot of money i think that spells a lot of kind of issues for maybe the, the the long film the three hour film the two and a half hour plus film films i kind of really enjoy when movies really want to take their time but uh we'll see we will see how that how that all goes down but uh thank you guys for watching if you haven't seen babylon uh go see it give it a try i really enjoyed it if you have seen babylon let me know down below how you feel about it and i will see you guys next time adios